This program was transcribed for release at this time. What's the name? John Hancock. What's the program? Point Sublime. Point Sublime. Presented by the John Hancock Mutual Life Insurance Company. Starring Cliff Arquette and Mel Blank, Point Sublime is written and produced by Robert L. Red. In just a moment, we'll bring you the human story of a fellow named Ben Willis. But first, meet your John Hancock agent. Friends, did you ever feel so doggone good about the warmth and harmony in the close-knit circle of those you love? That you just wanted to tack up a do-not-disturb sign on the front door? You'd like to feel sure that your family will be protected, will be able to continue that comfortable existence right through the years. Isn't that right? Well, fortunately, that's not an impossible goal. With the friendly cooperation of the John Hancock agent in your community, you can plan soundly for the protection of your family's future. You see, the John Hancock Mutual Life Insurance Company, with its 85 years of practical experience, has developed a simple readjustment plan, a plan that will help provide for your loved ones if something should happen to you. Now, you can make that reassuring plan your plan with life insurance payments. And the cost is surprisingly small. Just talk to your local John Hancock agent about it. You'll find him glad to help. And now for the human story of a fellow named Ben Willis. It is tomorrow morning at Point Sublime, Tuesday, two days before Thanksgiving. Ben Willis has been doing a thriving pre-holiday business at his store. Right now, he is sorting through his morning mail, which was just delivered. Well, I'll open this package here. Looks like a book. Can't understand why I don't get a letter from Sharon about Sammy Soule. Well, it is a book. Poetry. Ted Malone's Anthology of American Poetry. Well. Hey, Emily, 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 Mr. Willis. Yeah, Mooney, please get back in the storeroom and sort those cranberries. Lots of people be coming in today to buy them. Well, yeah, that's what I came to tell you. I'm all through with the cranberry, cranberry, those little red things. And, and, and now I'm uh, mixing the sack of the and nuts. Mm. Now, don't put in too many of those expensive paper shell pecans now. No, I, I won't. I, I'm filling in with plenty of Brazil and the Brazil and the and the filberts. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Say, uh, did you get a letter from Sammy up in, in San Francisco at the Veterans Hospital? No, I thought I would by now. Moon, you get back to work. Yes, sir, yes, sir. That's all I ever do. It will be, will be work, 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 work. Well, if E.V. Derling can get away at poetry, I guess I can try a little shot over here. Open the book, pick me out one. Yeah, let me see. Well, look who's coming, old Patrick Mullaney. <laughs> How are you, Benjamin, this happy two days before Thanksgiving? Oh, fine, Patrick. How's everything over at your Shamrock Cafe? Fine, fine, fine. Say, so give me a package of rosemary leaves. Yeah, rosemary leaves, you say. Yep, right here. Some rosemary leaves he's got. Charge it? Yeah, charge it. Say, where are you having your turkey dinner Thursday, Patrick? Oh, I suppose I'll be eating at the end stool in my cafe with the transients to drop in. Oh? Where are you having your dinner? In the company of Miss Evelyn Hanover? Yeah, me and Harry McBarr have been invited to Evie's house for Thanksgiving dinner. How romantic. The three of you. Well, never don't see you before, Benny. Blessings on you this Thanksgiving. Well, same to you, Patrick. Bye. <laughs> Poor old Pat. Hate to see folks alone at holiday time. Well, now I'll try once again to get a look at my book here. Hmm, what's this poem here? Prayer for a Very New Angel. My Violet Allen story. <laughs> a very new angel. This must be about that cute little baby Evie's been taking care of at her cottage this week. Yeah, I see what it's about. Oh. God be lenient, her first night there. Her first night there? Hey, what happened to this baby they're writing about? She must be... Hey, you mean, Mr. Willis. Oh, what is it, Mooney? Hey, yeah. The hazelnuts are kind of wormy. They're not so good. Well, throw them out. Do what? Well, if they're no good, throw them out. Get rid of them. Throw them out? Yes. <laughs> I just did. <laughs> Get back to work in there, Moon. You're out of it. Now, where was I? Oh, yeah, my poem. Poem. 
I always left the light out in the hall. Ooh, ooh, chilly this morning. Oh, hello, Evie, honey. Howie. How are you, Betty, my boy? Oh, I'm okay, Howie. But how are you, Evie, baby? Believe me, I don't feel like Thanksgiving is just around the corner. What's the matter? Oh, I've just been down to the trailer camp trying to talk a little sense to that fool Pendleton girl. Oh? Say, who's at your cottage taking care of the baby? My neighbor came over. Oh, how is little Penny this morning? Dr. Lockhart came by around 7. He's trying a new medicine now. Oh, gone. I almost forgot. What, Harry? I was in the telegraph office a few minutes ago. Cecil asked me to bring you this telegram. Telegram? Yeah, here, there. Oh, thanks. Maybe it's from Sharon. About Sam at the veteran hospital. Yeah, it is. Yeah. What the... Says doctors believe Sam's eyes almost ready for operation. Oh, good. May operate Thursday. Sam wonders if you can be with him during the operation. Don't let Sam's father know we've asked you. He might be hurt. He makes Sam nervous. Love, Sharon. Well, if he wants me there, I'll be there. But Thursday, that's Thanksgiving Day. Oh, yeah, I'll miss my old-fashioned family-style dinner with you, Abby. I'd kind of plan on us three sitting around the table together. Yeah, but if Sammy wants me... Then, when would you leave for San Francisco? Well, tomorrow, I guess. Well, you will have Thanksgiving dinner, and you'll have it at my house, and we'll all be together like we planned. Oh, but how, Abby? You've got my turkey here in your refrigerator. Yeah? Get it out for me right now, then. What are you talking about? If Mr. Rosefeld could change Thanksgiving Day, Evelyn Hanover can, too. Yeah. Well, uh, well, we'll celebrate our Thanksgiving today, this afternoon. Well, how can you ever get things organized, Well, Abby? how will you help? We'll have dinner at 4.30. Mm-hmm. It's all settled. Get me that turkey, then. <laughs> yeah, sure. Hi, <laughs> right, golly, Evelyn, you're a wonderful woman. Just stop the palaver and open that refrigerator door. Yes, ma'am. Oh, brother, what a bird this is. <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't be celebrating at your house, Evelyn. With that little tenant or baby there, stick. Oh, Penny's in the back room. We won't disturb her. Evie, you said Doc Lockhart gave the baby some new medicine. If she doesn't react by this afternoon, what? Then the doctor will probably take her up to the hospital in Vernon. Oh, no. Did you tell her mother yet? I said I've just come from that trailer camp. Nothing seems to make any difference to that fool woman. What happens to her baby? She burns me up. Then... You've got to go down and try to talk to her. Oh, but I hardly know the girl. What could I say? Impress on her that maybe her baby's seriously ill. Please, say. Well, I'll get down there sometime today. Come, Howard. Carry the bird. We've got to get right over to my cottage and get to work. Yes, Evelyn. Hey, oh, wait. Aaron Saul's coming in. Good hey, morning, Aaron. Good morning, oh, Ben. Good morning. Uh, Hanover, Mr. McBriar. Ben, that turkey Mama picked out a week ago, the one you're holding for us. Uh, yeah, yeah. You want to take it now? No, you better try to sell it, or better give it to somebody. But, Mr. Saul, there's something... Mama that... says this morning she won't feel like cooking a big dinner Thanksgiving for just the two of us. <laughs> we hope this year Sammy would be with us. Oh, I know how disappointed you are, Mr. Saul. Mr. Wheeler just got a telegram. How we... Telegram? Yes. From Sharon. What then? What, what, what? Well, the doctors think Sam's eyes are okay now for the operation. Sam, Oh, they're operating Thursday. Operating? Then I should go right up to San Francisco and be with Sam. Uh, I... Well, Aaron, if I were you, I'd stay here and let the doctors and Sharon... Do I... Yeah, I, I mean, you might get excited or... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you're right. I, I might get excited and be in the way and upset, Sammy. I, I'll, I'll stay home. Maybe even doing harm at the wrong time... I will stay home and wait. Ben, aren't you leaving for San Francisco tomorrow? Huh? You order some Christmas stuff for the store. Hey, oh, yeah, yeah. Buying trip, buying trip. I'll try to get a minute to drop over to the hospital and see how Sam's You're going coming. to San Francisco, yeah. Ben. You see, Sammy, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah well, sure, Aaron, sure, Aaron. And the world's moving so fast, things happen so sudden. Uh, ben, yeah. you give the turkey to somebody who wouldn't have one, huh? Well, I'll check around, Aaron. You, you sure you don't want it? No, no, no. Thursday, I'll take my for not a ride. Two of us, maybe we'll go to Vernon for dinner and maybe to a movie. Yeah, Mama and me will be together Thanksgiving Day. <laughs> the world is moving so fast. Oh, dear. You know, Howie, a big blabbermouth telling about the telegram from Sharon. Oh, hell, I didn't know. Oh, hush up, both of you. Mm-hmm. Evelyn, where are you going? After all their plans to have their son home for Thanksgiving. Well, they won't be alone. Oh, Mr. Saul. What? Come back. I want to talk with you. You, you want to talk to Miss Hanover? I'm having our Thanksgiving dinner today at my cottage because Ben is going out of town. Huh? I want you and Sarah to join us. Oh, Miss Hanover will be glad. No. No, 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 thank you. We couldn't. Why not? We want you. 
You really want to? Yes. We leave at 4 30. Mr. Willett and Mr. McBriar will be there. Oh, Miss Hanover, if I can tell Mama about an invitation to dinner, it'll help so much. I. Oh. There's just one thing. Yes? I, I hate to ask. Well, what, Mr. Saul? I know Mama, Mama's Mama, when she makes up her mind to something. Well, it is. Oh, now what's worried you so? When we realized last night we would be alone to eat our Thanksgiving dinner, Mama said we should bring up Sammy's chair to the table with us. Sammy's chair? Yes. Yeah. The one where he would have sat. Oh, don't laugh, Miss Hanover. You see, Mama's Mama. <laughs> well, Sarah can have an empty chair at my table if it will make her happy. She, she, she could at your house. Of course. Oh, you, you're such a kind woman, Miss Hanover. I'll, I'll go ask Sarah. I'll let you know. She won't say yes right away. I'll let you know yes later today. Is that all right? Of course. <laughs> of course. Goodbye. Goodbye. I'll go right home and tell Mama everything. <laughs> Mama's Mama. Oh, you invited Aaron and his wife. Yes, I did. Swell. Are they coming? He let me know later. Oh, Ben, now I'm getting excited. I'm going to have people, a lot of people, sit down to my Thanksgiving table. Say, hey, where's Mooney? Yeah, Mooney, right here. Yeah, Mooney, you've been eavesdropping again. Oh, and, and, and no, sir, I, I just happen to be uh, listening at the keyhole. <laughs> Mooney, you're coming to my house for a big Thanksgiving dinner this afternoon. I am? Mm. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, I'll be there. Oh, oh, gee, I'll get all dressed up nice, too, um, Miss Hanover. No, don't worry about that. Oh, oh sure I will. It, it, it is the first time I was ever invited out to, to eat a Thanksgiving dinner at, at somebody's house. Say, I'll, I'll wear my uh, new sweater with a purple and green stripes. Yeah, yeah, I'll wear that. Yeah, yeah, sure. Stop being so excited, kid. Yeah. Oh, dear, it's terribly late. I simply must get home. Come, Howie. Come in, Evelyn. And then... Don't forget to go down and see that Nancy Pendleton. Yeah, 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 I will. Bye, Betty. Bye, bye. Gosh, Mr. Willard, I, I, I was just kidding a minute ago. Kidding about what? Well, I, I didn't want Miss Hanover to know I, I don't have anything really good to dress up in for her three-year Thanksgiving party today. And what about that new sweater with the purple and green stripes? Oh, I, I don't have any. I was just uh, m- m- making that up. Hey, you're just about my size. Sure. Uh, uh, what you mean? Well, if you want to get dressed up real nifty, I'll let you wear my chalk striped suit, the one you like so much. You will? Yeah. Honest? Sure. Oh, oh I, I look just like a, like a man of distinction. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's sure good to me. But you listen to me, young man. Yeah. When you sit down at that dining table this afternoon, you got to remember one thing. you got to be awful careful how you eat. Eat? Oh, 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 I get it. Yeah, they, don't spill gravy on your vest. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> hey, I better get back to work. Work, work. <laughs> oh, dear, it takes so little to make some folks happy. Oh, dear, I dread going down to talk to that Pendleton girl. I don't know what to say to a woman who's practically deserted her own baby. Maybe I better take her a box of candy or something. You know... Morning, Ben, old sock. Oh, Webb Tyler, come on in. What can I do for you, Webster? Can of tobacco, Ben, my regular brand. No, you said it, son. Can of tobacco for brother Tyler, the pipe-smoking Tyler's. Not to be confused with the typical new Tyler's. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good, huh? <laughs> Pretty good. I got it off real good, yeah. There you are, Webb. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Say, how's Helen? Just wonderful. Well, I don't see her around town much lately. Well, she's sticking pretty close to home. Helen's a little uncomfortable these days. Oh, yeah. Well, one thing you can be happy about, Helen will want her baby. Well, certainly. Why would you make a remark like that, Ben? Well, Webb, I got a very unpleasant task ahead of me. Phil Pendleton's wife. Pendleton? Uh, Don't believe I know him. Well, they've been living down there at the trailer camp the last three months, and he's working on a big construction job up at Vernon. Oh, yeah. Well, their little baby got sick about a week ago, and Evelyn Hanover took it in to help out. Now the mother won't come to see the child. Oh, fine. Yeah. That youngster's got a pretty drab future ahead of him. Well, it's a her. Cute little baby girl. (laughs) Penny. (laughs) She's pretty sick, too. Well, thank heavens the woman who deserts her child is rare. Most mothers I know show their affection for their family by making the home a pleasant place to live in. Well, something must be troubling this girl. I just can't believe it. And a good father shows his affection for his family by providing for that home. Working hard to give his family whatever he can earn. And you know... There's another thing that any father needs to ask himself. If he weren't there to provide for his loved ones, and his wife had to go to work, what would happen to his children? Now, if a man ever considered this deeply important question, 
Here's something to remember. What's that, Webb? Well, Ben, you know, in almost every community, there's a friend a man can really count on to help him prepare right now for any such emergency. The John Hancock agent. He's always glad to show a man how to plan a simple life insurance program to protect his loved ones should the emergency arrive. Well, Webb, suppose a man buys life insurance for the protection of his family... And he doesn't. Well, no serious emergency ever comes up. <laughs> ben, did you ever see the day when you couldn't use an extra dollar you'd put away? <laughs> Never have. <laughs> if a family doesn't have to use the life insurance money, why, there are many other ways it can come in mighty handy later on. You know, it's easier than many people realize to manage a life insurance policy of the kind I'm talking about and still fit it into a regular budget. Yeah, yeah. No, sir, I'm not kidding. When I say a John Hancock agent can help a man plan a safer tomorrow for himself and his loved ones. Webb, I think that every man should... Say, uh, me, Mr. Willis. Oh, what is it now, Mooney? What, what? Oh, oh hello, hello, Mr. Tyler. How are you, Mooney? Oh, fine. Say, uh, Mr. Willis, uh, I just went back to my room to uh, try and find a nice shirt I could wear to the, uh, the dinner party when, when I have on your suit. Well, so what about it? Oh, uh, the, the, the situation is terrible. You should see my shirts. The laundry sent them back with with all different buttons sewed on them. <laughs> yeah? yeah. <laughs> well, you're lucky. I'm lucky? Yeah, you should see the last batch of shirts I got back from the laundry. They sent back my buttons with different shirts sewed on them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Well, don't worry, kid. We'll get you all dressed up real fancy. Oh, what a day. <laughs> Part two of Point Sublime. It's mid-afternoon. Only because he promised, Ben Willett has gone down to the trailer camp to see Nancy Pendleton, the young mother of the baby Evelyn Hanover has been caring for. Ben has just entered the cramped quarters of the trailer. You mind if I close the door? Well... Yeah. You can sit here at the table. I'll sit on the bed. Thanks. Here, I brought you some candy and a little book of poetry. Why? Oh, I don't know. I... Thought you might like them. Here. Thanks. Guess I haven't gotten around to much poetry lately. Uh, say, what's the matter with you, Nancy? Nothing the matter with me? Well, well, we don't know each other very well. Maybe you don't want to talk. I don't know. Maybe I've been thinking too much lately. I'm sure in a rut. Well, we all get in rut. Well, I'm in a bad one. Maybe I've decided that while I'm still young and got a few good looks, I want to change some of the things about my life. Well, changes aren't always easy. Especially when you've got such sober responsibilities as a husband and a baby. Baby's getting good care? Yeah, well, by somebody else. Oh, I know what you think. You think I'm no good as a mother. Well, maybe I'm not. Maybe I... I never wanted a baby. You're not very convincing, Nancy. I don't think you mean a word you're saying. Well, I do. Since Phil left, I've had plenty of time to think. And I'm going to wash the slate clean this time. When Phil comes back today, I'm going to tell him. Your husband coming back today? He sent word last night. Job's closed down for a week. Oh, I'll tell him. What? I'm leaving. Oh, fine. Can't anybody see my side of it? You're the mother of a baby. Well, yeah, baby I got left with, and how much money to take care of it or me. And Phil just up and leaves. Oh, it's wonderful to have a man's independence. Well, I'm through. I, uh... I, I guess Penny must be pretty sick, Miss Pendleton. Well, she'll get well. What makes you so sure? Why, you've been doing all your grand thinking. Did you ever think what it'd be like not to have a baby? It'd be all right. What if Penny dies? Well, she isn't that sick. Is she? You haven't bothered to see her for three days. What do you care? Well, I... I, I don't care. I mean... I brought you a book, Nancy. I know. I turned down a page here to a certain poem. Here, read it. What is... Now, this one right here. A prayer for a very new angel. 
What's that mean? Read it. I don't want to. I said read it out loud. I want to know you read it. Oh, well. A prayer for a very new angel. God be lenient her first night there. The crib she slept in was so near my bed. Her blue and white wool blanket was so soft. Her pillow hollowed so to fit her head. I don't want to read this. Read it, I said. Teach me that she'll not want small wounds or me when she has you and heaven's immensity. I always left a light out in the hall. I hoped to make her fearless in the dark. And yet, she was so small. One little light. Not in the room. It scarcely matters. Hark. No. No, she seldom cried. God... Not too far for her to see. This first night, light of stars. Go on, Nancy. And in the morning when she first woke up, I always kissed her on her left cheek where the dimple was. And oh, I wet the brush. It made it easier to curl her hair. Just, just tomorrow morning, God, I pray, when she wakes up, do things for her my way. There, I knew all the time you were pretending you didn't care. Oh, where is my baby? Doc Lockhart gave her some new kind of medicine this morning. If it doesn't work, we'll have to take Penny to the hospital up in Vernon. Oh, no. Oh, I've tried so hard not to let any of you know. Oh, but why, Nancy? Why? Oh, because my baby's so much better off where she is. Oh, that's it. it. It seems almost as if she has a real home. You thought we'd keep her if you pretended. Oh. Well, just till I got things worked out. With with Philip. You didn't mean what you said about leaving him, did you? I don't know. I must be a little crazy. Well, honey, everybody's a little crazy these days. Have a solid talk with your husband when he gets here, huh? I will. You can straighten it all out. Maybe. Oh, I want to go and see my baby, Mr. Willis. Sure you do. I'll drive you right up to Miss Hanover's now. Oh, and by the way, we're celebrating Thanksgiving a little early today, Miss Hanover's, lots of folks, and we'll have two more chairs there for you and Phil. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Willis. Thank you. I sure washed it. Don't I, Miss Hanover? Yes, Mooney. Oh. Uh, we'll, be... <laughs> well, you won't have to dry that one. <laughs> ah, I'm sorry. Oh, well, never mind. Things are sure beginning to smell good, Evelyn. Hey, mm-hmm. you're sure going to have a mob for dinner. Uh, how many? Fourteen, including the Pendletons. Oh, and Emily, Mrs. Pendleton's still in there with her baby, huh? Yes. I just don't know, but that Ben Willett has a way of getting to people. Oh, he's wonderful. Yeah. Oh, heavens, the noise. Yeah, I'll get it. It's Patrick Mullaney. He's here at the back door. Uh, hello. Happy Thanksgiving two days early, everybody. Quiet, quiet, Patrick. Come on in. What are all the packages? Oh, some decorations for the table. Paper mashy horn of plenty. Some candles, fruit. Thought you might like them. Ben told me that you were having folks for dinner. Well, goodbye. Now, wait a minute. You'll have dinner with us, too. Four days. I accept. <laughs> it worked. Thanks for the invite. Good day, my friend. <laughs> oh, Patrick thinks he pulled a fast one on me. Oh, oh gee, it's, it's a quarter to four. I, I got to dash back to the store and put on Mr. Willis's. Uh, I mean, put on my new suit. Yeah, I got to get dressed up pretty for the party. <laughs> hey, I'll be a regular bo ba bo ba bo ba just like an esquire. <laughs> I just 
talk to my husband on the phone. He'll come here for dinner with us. Oh, did he ask about the baby, Penny? Yes, yes. And Mr. Willow, for the first time in months, he asked about me. I guess you love Philip Nancy. Oh, <laughs> you know everything, don't you? <laughs> Somebody answer the door. Oh, I'll get I'm it. I'm lighting the candles on the table. Aaron, Sarah, come here, come here. Happy Thanksgiving to this household. Yeah. Many good people. Then take you to Stone's Ranch. Yeah, here. How's your side today, Sharon? My side is feeling better already since I've been here only two seconds. Well, well, you're just in time. Well, come on in to the table, everybody. The turkey is ready. We were late because Mama had such a time with the kid curling. Yeah, you <laughs> come on, folks, in the dining room. Patrick, Nancy, everybody. Yeah, come, come on, on now, everybody. Oh, look, isn't the table beautiful, Vicar? Oh, ah, some decoration in the center piled up with fruit and nuts. Yeah. Me horn of plenty here. Well, now, there's going to be plenty for everybody, but we don't want to waste anything. Remember the food condition in Europe. Everybody eat what's on his plate. You bet. Well, let's all sit down now. Just find places anywhere. Right. Mrs. Saul, yes. you sit here. Aaron, you sit beside me. I sit beside you, Mama. Nobody takes the chair on Mrs. Saul's right. You didn't forget. You remembered. There will be one empty chair at our table. My boy. <laughs> now, everybody sit. Yeah, Howie, yeah, yeah, Patrick, you have places. <laughs> and then, yeah. then you sit at the head of the table and carve. Okay. <laughs> Will I carve? <laughs> Say, is the turkey ready? Uh, yeah, 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 it's all ready. <laughs> Bring it in, Mooney. Bring it in. Hey, here I come. Oh, boy, it's heavy. Now, let me set the down. Oh, 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 brother. <laughs> now, then okay. we'll carve, but... Before we start, I want us to all bow our heads and thank you. Mm-hmm. Bless us, O Lord, for these thy gifts, which we are about to receive from thy bounty. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Miss Hanover, might I just be adding a word to that? Yes, Patrick, yes. It's a little prayer Rappy Burns once said. Some hay meat and canna eat, and some would eat who want it. But we ain't meat and we can eat. So let the Lord be thanked. Amen. Mr. Saul, hmm? would you like to add something? Me? Well, I, I can't express my thoughts so good in English. Could, could I say it in Hebrew? Of course. Oh, thank you. Reboin kolhola mim moidi manach nuloch shesham tochel kenu lehoi storim piatsois achofshi piatsois habris ovinu shabo shamaim Mishpalim anach no loch, shalashono habot, yeah, in sochoin, besholoin, shalvo, tiskayin, bekol ho elom. Ome. And God take care of my son. Evelyn. Yes? I got a kind of a little modern Thanksgiving prayer. It's kind of for Americans in 1947. Please say it, Ben. All right. Thank thee, O Lord, for daily bread. For homes unbombed above our heads. We thank thee for the right to live and breathe free men. And when at end of day we turn unto our beds to rest in quiet peace, we thank thee, Lord. My baby! Jacques Lockhart! We didn't hear you come in. I brought our baby in to see our first Thanksgiving turkey. Yeah. You see, honey? Oh, my baby. Oh, no, no. Oh. The uh, doctor got her well, and the doctor gets to sit down in his empty chair here. And Not that chair. Uh, what? Mama, a baby. A first Thanksgiving, Mom. Remember, Sandy? Yeah, yeah. Maybe so. Oh, sit down, Doctor, with Thanks. the baby. <laughs> oh, you look so... Here we are. Oh, you look so Beautiful. wonderful. The medicine works. Like a charm. Hey, when do we eat? Can I stab the bird now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, carve it. Well, it's carve it. Oh, it's a wonderful Thanksgiving, isn't yeah, it, Mama? Yeah, This program was transcribed. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.